Here's another question, and Kelly gets to be the first to answer this one, and it probably is appropriate. Uh, the person states, Kelly stated concern about California's desire to gain excessive oversight on Menlo Park's land development. What changes, if any, would you implement to roll back city government's oversight on its citizens' property rights? It's a mouthful. Well, li listen, I think, you know, a, a very strong principle that I live by is that uh, Menlo Park should uh, create Menlo Park's destiny. You know, we have to push back on the state. They have way too many of their fingers in our business. In 2008, High Speed Rail proposed building a four-track, elevated, train freeway through the middle of our town. And I fought back on that. We sued the High Speed Rail Authority. We were the only cities in California to do so. And this gave time for the true facts to come out about High Speed Rail. Today, we're at the table with High Speed Rail and Caltrain, and we're working on modernizing Caltrain instead of um, instead of facing this, this um, blight on our community. I will fight to protect our community against the state. Okay, Catherine? Want me to repeat you, the, yeah, can you repeat repeat the question? What question. changes, if any, would you implement to roll back city government's oversight on its citizens' property rights? I think it comes down to, again, uh, streamlining the processes and providing clear guidelines and transparency and uh, making very clear uh, what can be done and what can't be done. And in planning, there's a lot of gray area. Mm -hmm. there, it's, it's not as clear as it could be. Um, so that provides uh, confusion sometimes mm -hmm. and, and inconsistencies in people getting permits. I'm, not, I, I'm positive I can't tell the story in 30 seconds, but I myself have tried to get permits for uh, an underwater thing. I had permeable pavers and I wanted the water to go through the permeable pavers in a French drain under the ground so that I could use that to water my grass. And um, I had one person from one part of the city planning say, that's fabulous, how green and wonderful, and another person say, absolutely, you cannot do that, we're going to have mosquitoes, everybody's gonna die of malaria, it's terrible. And they, I watched them fight it out, invited them to, to continue that conversation and let me know. They finally came back and said, well, you need to do a $5,000 engineering report to decide. I let them know that was not possible, and in the end, they, I, I didn't do it, and two months later, they came back and said I could, but by then, I was finished. Um, so, we really need to get clear guidelines and streamline this thing okay. for people. All right. Carolyn, what do you think? I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. We have to continue the process because uh, if, you know, some things that people want, want to do may not align with what is needed or or healthy or you know so so we really have to go a case-by-case -case basis and and weigh the pros and cons I'm not uh, I haven't done any planning or gone to the city for any permits to do anything special the only thing I know about is um, a use permit that I did for my business and um, I was shocked that I had to do that because it was just a small business mm -hmm. and in other cities I had gone and got a business license but I never had to go through a full use permit and pay $1,200, so mm. thank you. Okay, all right, Dave. Um, it's okay. I'm sorry, I get Dave and Ray mixed up on my list here. Go ahead, Ray, your turn. It's okay. Um, so uh, real quickly, um, and here comes a shameless plug, I'm, I've been endorsed by all the planning commissioners in, in Menlo Park, including John Onklin, who was recently appointed. And the reason why is because I sat down and talked with all of them to figure out what the challenges were in this area. And really what we need to do is we need to standardize our residential building guidelines, if at all possible, so that everybody gets the same result. Right now what happens in Menlo Park is if you go to the Planning Commission, you might end up getting a different result than someone else who did. Or, or if you, or if you, or, or if, and if that later goes to council, you might end up getting a different re result. That's not fair, and it's, and it, and it basically inhibits the process. The other thing we need to do is streamline our use permit process in our industrial areas for all the reasons I've talked about tonight. Uh, applicants don't know whether or not they're going to get the same result as another applicant, and that, and what that does is that absolutely inhibits the process and makes us not business friendly. 
Um, so those are, those are two areas that I think are absolutely essential. And the great thing is our planning commission wants it. They're tired of having things come to them and it's frustrating for them to have to go through it. Okay, uh, Dave. Uh, thank you. I wanted to clarify some of my points on the last question. I went first, and the question, as I understood, was how are, how are you going to fund a police substation? Um, and I think I was unclear on, I'm actually definitely for public safety over there. So I, I do agree that we do need to find the funding. My, 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 uh, my point was that I have not been in the city government here yet to know how to find that funding yet. So I definitely agree that we need a police substation out there to take care of the people on, in the Bellhaven area. Okay. Um, as far as the next question goes, um, we, we actually have enough regulations here already. I'm, I'm anti-additional bureaucracy, red tape, and so on. So I will definitely fight against the state from ad adding additional regulation to any type of planning and building that we have. Okay. 